your skin, that shit is popping, girl. Body on tan, damn, you got it, girl. You got a boss up, getting them cakes, living your base, racks up. black females out here y'all don't understand the struggles of being a black man out here in america and not knowing whether or not you gonna make a home to your churn every night because of the police gunning you down but don't y'all be out here gunning each other now okay but we ain't talking about that Hell, don't y'all be rapping about killing each other in music we ain't talking about that either we can talk about killing each other in rap music but we don't like the police killing us stay on subject woman you brought up your kids. Tyrone, you don't even see your kids. And then, yeah, I be trying to see my kids. You know my baby mamas be tripping because I don't want to be with none of them, so they be holding my kids from me. You know that. Okay, but your baby mama saying you don't give them no child support either. Okay, but I still be going out my way to try to see them. They live five minutes from my house, Tyrone. That is out my way, woman. See, y'all, that's why we don't like y'all black women's mouths. Y'all run y'all mouth too much. Y'all always bringing up stuff that's irrelevant. Well, was you cheating on me, Irrelevant? I only cheated on you ten times. You act like I do it every day, bruh. See, that's why we date women of other races, man. Hey, Booz, hey. It is Lexis Exodus, leader of the Black Woman Exodus. How are you guys doing? Like always, if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe, please share, please say what's up to me in the comment section, say what's up to me in the chat. Hey, y'all in the chat, thank you so much for tuning in. Also, when you have a moment, please pause this video and follow the backup channel. It is called Lex X. that's L-E-X-E-X. -E -E you can also find the link in the description below. Also, if you have any suggestions or any ideas for any new stories, feel free to share that to me to my Gmail. That is LexisExodusChannel at gmail.com. Also, shout out to my Patreon family. I love y'all. Y'all are so dope. Y'all always show up and show out and show support. Shout out to my Discord family. The Discord chat is always so lit. If you're interested in joining and checking out exclusive content, please, uh, you'll find the Patreon link in the description below. Lastly, y'all, before we get to it, please follow me on Facebook and TikTok. <laughs> I'm trying to get better about using different social media platforms to connect with you guys. I know everybody doesn't use YouTube. A lot of you guys love Facebook. A lot of you guys really enjoy TikTok. I do too. I'd be on their way too often. So please, once you have a moment, take a second and follow me on um, the other social media platforms. That's at Lexus Exodus on all other platforms. Arms. This is another installment of my series called The Blackistan Zoo, where we profile the dusty derelicts, crazy creatures, and animals in Blackistan. Tonight, we are going to profile the unprotected woman. Okay. And I wanted to do this show in particular because we oftentimes see Black women being referred to as the most unprotected groups of people in the world. Um, and we all know this is a Malcolm X quote where this originated from. And although we'll see the quote regurgitated over and over again by hoteps, by Black activists, and so-called pro-Black or Afrocentric people, no one does anything about it. No one does, does anything. And everyone idly allows Black women and girls to be victimized and preyed upon repeatedly throughout Pakistan and throughout these communities. So let's look at some stats. So I often talk about how more than 40% of Black women experience physical violence from an intimate partner during their lifetimes. We also know that one in four Black girls will be sexually violated before the age of 18. And we know that's grossly underestimated because typically, Black girls are silent. Um, they're victim shamed and they're too embarrassed and too ashamed to tell their stories. So that number is likely a, a very large underestimate. Um, we also know that Black women are two and a half times more likely to be M-worded by men than white women. 
And uh, the latest stat from Black Femicide says that 1,140 Black women have had their lives taken from them so far this year. And the bulk of that crime is interracial. So 90% of the time it's committed at the hands of other men within this community. Okay. Um, Yeah, so Black Femicide even reports that every six hours, a Black woman tragically has her life taken away from her in this country, y'all. So I wanted to do this because we know the media won't cover this information. It doesn't align with the narrative that we're being force fed right now, that these men are victims, that they're being brutalized and that they're losing their lives unjustly. So this information will never be shared on mainstream platforms. It, it just won't. Um, so I want to do my job and utilize my platform because it's growing and because I have a lot of visibility to profile some of these stories so that we are all aware of what's happening. And so that we all understand and are conscious of the horrific acts that are happening commonly throughout this country and throughout the world, really, because we know that Black femicide is happening. It's a global issue, not just a, a U.S. issue. So so that's what we'll do tonight. Um, so needless to say, trigger warning, tonight we are going to cover some very tough subject matter. If you're sensitive to content like this, then proceed with caution. Okay, so I first want to look at this Malcolm X quote that the Dusties like to regurgitate over and over again about Black women being unprotected, but doing nothing about it. So let's actually look at this quote and listen to Malcolm X uh, say this and share this information straight from the horse's mouth so we can really analyze what's happening here and how we're so unprotected. The most disrespected person in America is the Black woman. The most unprotected one, a person in America is the black woman. The most neglected person in America is the black woman. Okay. So that was a lot there. That was a mouthful. There's a few things happening here with this quote. So here's my thing. Um, this quote is true. It is true. The most unprotected person in America is the black woman. However, here's the thing. Malcolm X here is talking about how, you know, it's these men's obligation to protect us from white men when the reality is, the harsh truth is, these women are being victimized by men belonging in their own communities. Okay. So it's one thing to just be unprotected by the men in your own community, but it's a whole nother thing to have these same men actually be the ones actively victimizing you. Do y'all get what I'm saying? Like, I don't I don't give a F about Nick Nogs. Y'all can do what y'all want. If you, you know, they'll say, oh, you know, I'm only obligated to protect my mama and my sister and my daughter, just the women in my family. I don't care about anyone else. Fine, cool. Although we know that real men protect the women within their community, whether or not they're related to them. If you choose not to, Dusty, that's fine, whatever, who cares? But here's the thing, don't turn around and pray and victimize me on top of that. Don't pray on me on top of that. So no, you don't have to protect me. I don't care. But just don't victimize me. Just leave me the hell alone. Um, so that that's not what happens here, though. And Malcolm X is talking about how, you know, our job is to protect these women from other groups of men. And, you know, we'll end the lives of white, of white men if they victimize our women. But here's the thing. There was a poet who said a very, very accurate and powerful quote. She said, before I leave my doorstep to get victimized, potentially by a white man, I'm getting punched in the face within my own home. So I don't have to leave my door to get victimized. I'm getting abused and I'm getting assaulted within the walls of my own home. So that's what what's happening here. So now that we've looked at that quote and we know where this whole idea of Black women being the most unprotected comes from, I want to look at some real-time examples of this. So I'd like to look at this first very horrifying story that really illustrates how unprotected Black women are. Um, and this particular woman details having a gun pulled on her by one of these men. And shout out to Black Femicide who actually shared this on her IG. So let's watch this. A black 
man who looks like me, who should be out there protecting me, just pulled a gun out on me and five other sisters. So y'all tell me, keep lying to yourself, talking about people about black lives. Just pulled a gun out on me because I'm out here trying to clean up. The clean up what's mine. Y'all so pro-black that y'all anti-black. Ain't nobody gonna say nothing about that, right? That's what I worry about. When the police came here, they didn't pull out no gun on me. But my brother did. A black man who looks like me. Who's Whew, okay. So this woman is very emotional. She's scared. She's terrified. She's in shock because she just had a gun pulled out on her by one of these, these fools. Poor thing. You can hear the heartache in her voice. She's terrified. And I see a lot of Black women say things like this. And it's because a lot of us are in denial. This woman is in shock. She's in the heartbreak stage and is still struggling trying to grapple with the fact that these men are the predators that victimize us over and over again. And that's why she's so sad. That's why, you know, her voice is breaking. It, it sounds like she's about to cry. That's why she's so, she's so emotional. Um, and she's still referring to these, these men as her brothers. She still has hope. She, she still has hope. Um, and she even points out the fact that when the police arrived, they didn't pull out a gun on her. They didn't victimize her. Although we like to say that, you know, Black Lives Matter, defund the police. I talk about my story over and over again. The people who saved me from the person who was victimizing me, from the person who was abusing me, from my abuser, that was the police. Okay. And again, this woman still has hope. That's why she's referring to these degenerate men as her brothers. I'm telling y'all, as soon as Black women, as soon as y'all just accept the fact that the Dusties in this community are hopeless, as soon as you understand and grapple with the fact that you need to remove yourself away from these fools, life will be far much easier for you. Because this is what's going to happen um, after this video. She's going to forget this incident. Um, she'll remember it, but she'll still give the benefit of the doubt. And she's going to experience this type of trauma and disappointment over and over again. So next time, it may not be a Dusty pulling a gun out on her, but it may be somebody, a Dusty Nick Nog breaking into her car. Even though she's a struggling single mother, someone stealing from her, a man in the community stealing resources from her, from a vulnerable woman. Or it may be that one of these dusties impregnates her and abandons her. You see what I mean? Like she still has hope in a hopeless situation. And unfortunately, she's going to continuously get disappointed over and over again until she finally accepts the harsh reality of the degenerate behavior that we're dealing with here. Okay, so let's keep going. So I wanna get into this next new story, this horrifying story of a man attempting to break into a woman's home. Unfortunately, she shut the door in his face seconds before he was able to break in. And shout out to loyal patron Yvette Him and also JC who shared this with me. So let's watch this and then we will talk through. We're going to begin with a terrifying video from the Bronx. A woman arriving home from a day at work early in the morning, followed by a stranger into her building. She gets inside and slams the door just in time. It happened about two weeks ago in the Concourse Village section of the Bronx. The NYPD trying to find this guy. I was reporter Naveen Dalawal speaking exclusively with a victim today. Naveen is live at the scene for us. Naveen. Yeah, Bill, this video is creepy for anyone coming home, whether it's day or night. But this woman tells me that she knew something was up as she approached her building at 2 in the morning. She saw the guy from the corner of her eye, but she was not expecting him to come into the building and then try to barge into her apartment. The video is terrifying. It was just a matter of seconds. He was going to take one second from going inside. Today, this brave woman, still shaking, finding the courage to speak out about that day as she arrived home from work around two in the morning. There was two guys in the, two guys like outside, right? 
and they were just like looking suspicious. You see her walking into the building, cautiously eyeing a man on the side. Seconds later, that same man in the white tank top walks into the Sherman Avenue building behind her. She knew he was up to no good. Miss, miss. He, he followed me inside the building and he said, miss, miss, twice. She describes a horrifying moment seen in this video as a suspect accesses the lobby. Seconds later, the woman knew he was around the corner and she quickly tried to open her apartment lock. Her instincts spot on. He came right after her, determined to get inside. I came inside and then right away I just screamed, somebody's following me. Like he was literally one second from coming inside. As she watches this video, she knows she was very lucky. I feel very scared. Like I was, I was, I was saying, what if? What if I had the top door locked? What if? Like it was literally just one second. If I had the top lock, I could. He could have got of me. Oh my lord. Yeah, what if? Well, she is truly lucky, and the victim has been living here for 29 years, and she says she's never seen this guy before. She does not know why she was targeted, but tonight, her red flags are up. Thank God this woman is okay. How terrifying. This could have ended so differently and tragically. Because ladies, you know how we tend to do, especially nowadays. A lot of us will have our heads in our phones. We'll have in our earbuds. It says that she was getting off of work late at night. Um, but what if she was coming from the club and she was intoxicated? You know what I mean? Like anything could have happened. Um, just, you know, just being normal people because you should be able to do that. You should be able to go out, go out and have a few drinks and not worry about some... Um, raggedy ass broke ass evil ass demonic dusty breaking into your house praying on you but yeah if this woman was doing any of that if she just you know wasn't conscious and didn't have you know if she if she had an earbuds or headphones or something and was distracted he likely would have gotten the best of her and like she said who knows what his intentions are she kept saying what if what if what if because best case scenario, he would have just robbed her and took her money or something. Worst case scenario, let's say he had very sinister intentions. She could have ended up sexually violated or even worse. This situation could have been deadly. But again, women in this community are unprotected and vulnerable. You know, we know that these men don't like to marry. So she's very likely a single woman living alone and unprotected. I just thank God that she had her wits about herself and was very vigilant because this could have turned out very, very badly. So shout out to, to sis for having her head on straight in, um, being conscious of her environment and being on guard. This, this ain't a way to live y'all. That's why I tell y'all when I talk about divesting, I'm not even just talking about romantic relationships. I'm talking about the communities that you're in. It's not safe. For women and children in Pakistan, it is, and you need to divest and remove yourself from any type of proximity of these men. Um, don't have them in your surroundings because things like this happen every day in Pakistan. Hey, 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 y'all! It is Lexis Exodus, leader of the Black Women Exodus. If you didn't know already, Black women are beautiful. Black women are intelligent and incredible. Black women are phenomenal and make great wives and mothers. I want to speak to your manager. Black women should be respected and deserve to be loved. Hey, 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 hey. Shut the Black women deserve to be treated like human beings, at least. <laughs> Listen, guys, if you're like me, you are so tired of your favorite black female content creators getting harassed by the trolls, silenced on social media, and censored by YouTube. 
We work so hard to stand up for Black women, and although YouTube allows us to be regularly berated, ridiculed, and degraded by dusties every day on the platform, as soon as we say one word to clap back, we're threatened with channel violations and are told to be silent or we will have our platforms removed. The bias algorithms, inconsistently enforced policies, and persistent trolling on YouTube is unacceptable and needs to stop. If you agree, meet me over on my Patreon, where you will be able to access completely raw, unfiltered, exclusive Lexus Exodus content. You will be able to access uncut, uncensored, and ad-free content, two bonus videos a week, access to the private Discord community, and much, much more. So meet me over on the Patreon at patreon.com slash Lexus Exodus. The link is also in the description below. Shout out to my exes. Mm. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. Shout out to Jai who shared this story with me about this man who set his sister on fire. Golly. So let's watch this next video and then we will chat. Tonight with U.S. Marshals on the Han for Detroit man accused of setting fire to his sister. Thank you for joining us for Action News at 6. I'm Carolyn Clifford. And I'm Dave Llewellyn. Vernon Woods Jr. has been on the run for weeks, according to police, and is being called a danger to the public. He is believed to be hiding on the city's west side as his sister fights for her life. This is being called a horrific case of domestic violence, domestic crime soaring through the pandemic. National data shows an 8% increase, and Detroit is no exception. Tonight, 7 Action News reporter Simon Shaquette takes us inside this horrific case and... He shows us what's being done to catch this man. U.S. Marshals say Vernon Woods Jr. committed an extremely cruel and violent crime here on the west side, and they believe he could still be hiding out in this area. It's part of the reason they're now asking for the public's help to track him down. Pictured here on social media in photos provided to us by family, Vernon Woods Jr. is accused of a vicious attack on a loved one. U.S. Marshals say it happened in the early morning hours of September 17th outside a home near Whitlock and Hayden after an argument with sister Kenea Daniels. Pours accelerant on her body, lights her on fire. Uh, my understanding is 50% of her body is severely burned. The victim in this case is still battling for her life. Parents of both the victim and suspect declined an interview request, but say they condemn domestic violence and they want Vernon to turn himself in. Marshals also don't want anyone else to get hurt. And no, Vernon has been on the run for more than a month. Going from house to house, no stable residency. In the neighborhood where the scene took place, a family next door sharing their disbelief and confusion over what led to this. I have no idea. I have no idea. That's ridiculous. This is severe to me. It's shocking to me. Shocking to even the most seasoned investigators in Detroit, who say they're among those stunned by the case as they look for Vernon. How somebody could do this to their sister. Assault with death and murder explosives, torture, and arson. If you can help in this case, call the U.S. Marshals at 313-202-6458, or you can also call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. You can receive a reward and remain anonymous. From Detroit's West Side, Simon Shaykhet, 7 Action News. All right, thank you so much, Simon. Now, if you or someone you know is a victim of domestic violence, never hesitate to call 911. We've also listed three 24-hour domestic violence hotlines on your screen right now. There are also plenty of other resources available on our website at WXYZ.com. Okay. Lord Jesus. Okay. So do y'all see this bull crap? So this thun done set his own effing sister on fire. And now she's in critical condition, fighting for her life. And this is that crap that I'm talking about. Black women are unprotected. So don't think for a second this is the first problematic, abusive behavior that this fool was ever engaged in. Because you don't go from being a model citizen one day, a contributing citizen to society, to the next day just setting your damn sister on fire. It don't work like that. I, I bet you probably what happened is this son's mother and father saw him displaying very erratic and violent behavior, and they did nothing. They never do because no one holds these dusties accountable. They just like to make excuses and coddle these fools, then act shocked 
and act all stupid once they seriously hurt somebody. It's like, where is this fool's father? Because let me tell you something, and I'm a woman. You set my daughter on fire, child. You won't be wearing a toe tag, messing with me. <laughs> but that will never happen. I'm, I wouldn't even be surprised if they are harboring and hiding this fool. Because black women and girls are, are unprotected in black as man. Okay, um, let's get to this next story that's going viral. And shout out to Thea who shared this with me. You probably heard about this unless you've been living under a rock. Uh, this next story about a man who violates a woman sexually in Philadelphia on the train while bystanders watched and did nothing. So let's watch this and then let's chat. SEPTA is asking people to step up, saying people need to speak up when they see a crime happening in front of them. I'm Shana Humphreys. I'm Jason Martinez, and this is all in response to the recent rape of a woman on the Market Frankfurt line. Our Jeff Cole live in Upper Darby tonight. Jeff. Yeah, Jason, we've talked to investigators who say, in point of fact, while this woman was being attacked, there were passengers on the train. They did apparently witness what was going on and apparently did nothing about about it. SEPTA tonight is defending its response to the rape on the L, and it's asking, though, passengers who see something wrong to please help them. At Upper Darby, 69th Street Station, passengers of the Market Frankfurt Line are outraged. The attack was brutal. It was wicked, and the worst part is when the people were watching. Several people watching, some within arm's length, says Upper Darby Superintendent of Police, whose officers are investigating the rape of a female passenger on the Market Frankfurt Line Wednesday night on a train heading west to Upper Darby. It's a horrendous act, and unfortunately, we live in a time right now where there are horrendous things, um, as always. Arrested is 35-year-old Fishton Noy, who investigators say is seen on a train security camera sitting next to the alleged victim, touching her, and then raping her. Investigators say a female SEPTA employee called in the attack, which was relayed on radio about the attacker disrobing on a train at 56th Street Station. SEPTA says Noy was arrested at 69th Street Station on the train in the act. This afternoon, SEPTA's general manager and its police chief met reporters at the station to urge passengers to speak up when they see trouble. Do you believe the agency's response was adequate and timely and did what it was supposed to do? It was a very quick response, and let me say to everybody, there are 28,000 cameras on the SEPTA system. You will be videoed. Any idea why anybody couldn't get through that? Yeah, I mean, we're talking about less than three minutes, Jeff. And, and in three minutes' time, police are coming in contact with that person and making an arrest. I think that's pretty good. So we were asking Chief Nestel there why, if there was a call made at 56th Street Station of the man disrobing, why they couldn't get to him earlier. And you heard his argument there that they caught him within three minutes. Investigators say the victim got on the train after having a few beers, maybe apparently after work, say that she did not certainly know her attacker, tried to push him off, couldn't, that she may have then gone into shock when he attacked her. What to do, says Septa, if you see something horrific or just something going wrong on the train is to obviously call 911 or use SEPTA call boxes on those trains. Live in Upper Darby, near the 69th Street Station, Jeff Cole, Fox 29 News. Oh boy. SEPTA. So this is just horrific. So this woman got violated on the train. Apparently I read somewhere that seven people watched and did nothing, just watched her assault passively child i can't uh, one of the other stories that i was reading had said how safe are women in america no 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 we need to talk specifically about how black women are unsafe in america this is disgusting and instead of calling the police these mother effers recorded it's like you mean to tell me between the seven of y'all y'all couldn't intervene to save this woman from her attacker Low Jesus. And here's the thing. These predators are so brazen. They're so bold. They're not even trying to hide this behavior. 
They know we are unprotected. They know they are a protected class. People are going to do nothing but cape and coddle for these men. So they are out here emboldened and they're doing this ish out in broad daylight and getting away with it. Nobody did nothing. They did nothing. They just sat there and watched this poor woman get assaulted. Okay, let's get into this next story about another unprotected woman. And shout out to Macron, who shared this story with me, loyal patron Macron, about a serial sexual violator who sexually assaulted several little girls in Detroit in abandoned homes. And he wasn't apprehended until recently. So let's watch this new story and then we will talk through. The Metro Detroit man charged with kidnapping and sexually assaulting a nine-year-old girl. We thank you for joining us here at 6. I'm Dave Llewellyn. And I'm Carolyn Clifford. Investigators telling us tonight that this is not Aaron McDonald's first run-in with the law or violent defense. 7 Action News reporter Darren Cunningham has much more on this for us from Farmington Hills. The suspect is 40-year-old Aaron McDonald, and police say he was just discharged from parole in May after serving 13 years in prison for a prior rape case. We are here today, though, because of the courage and tenacity of a little girl. She's only nine years old. She's not even five foot tall. She doesn't weigh 100 pounds. 48 hours ago, we told you that we were rapidly closing in on the suspect, and I'm proud to stand here with the Farmington Hills Police Department and the prosecutor announcing the arrest. The arrest of Aaron McDonald, an Oak Park resident, police say has a history of violence. A judge charged him late this afternoon with one count of kidnapping, one count of torture, three counts of criminal sexual conduct in the first degree, and one count of strangulation for allegedly abducting a nine-year-old girl walking the area of Eight Mile and Grand River. That's on Sunday. Police say he lured her into his car and tried to assault her in a nearby parking lot, then drove to a vacant home on Beaverland. When he left the room, the child escaped with only a blanket on. A good Samaritan stopped her and called 911. Approximately 20 search warrants have been executed so far. Thanks to tips from the public and the picture of that Jeep Renegade, the FBI, Detroit Police, and Farmington Hills PD put McDonald on surveillance and closed in on him, arresting him Thursday. Chief King saying what's happened is a reminder to warn your children about the dangers that are out there. It's a, it's a terrible reminder that we have to do that, but we have to be vigilant in protection, protecting not only ourselves, our community, especially our kids. McDonald remains in the Oakland County Jail until his next court hearing. The judge denied bond. In Farmington Hills, Darren Cunningham, 7 Action News. All right. Thank you so much, Darren. Lord Jesus. Okay. So what we just watched is a news story about the kidnapping, torture, and strangulation of a nine-year-old girl. This fool took her to an abandoned vacant home and she, thank the Lord, managed to escape with a blanket on. Oh, my Lord. My poor baby. We are unprotected, y'all. I don't know why y'all continue to have children with these fools. Because the men just abandon them. And so they're left very vulnerable. Um, susceptible to these types of predators. And sadly, this isn't uncommon. Like I, I indicated previously, one in four Black girls are victimized in this manner before the age of 18. Okay, so let's keep going. I want to talk through this next story of an unprotected woman in Atlanta who was an attorney. And she was shot and had her life tragically taken from her by her dusty that she was seeing. And shout out to Sunshine Flower who shared this with me. So let's watch this. A family is devastated after their daughter was found murdered at a midtown apartment complex. Her alleged killer caused chaos early yesterday morning during a shootout with police. Officers say he later killed himself. And as Fox 5's Brian Hill reports, loved ones say the victim was dating the alleged gunman. The family of 31-year-old Courtney Cotts describe her as a beautiful soul who lit up every room she entered. Loved ones are now left devastated as they try to understand how her journey ended like this. 
this was the scene early Wednesday morning after Atlanta police arrived at the high-rise apartment building on Peachtree Street in Midtown. Police say 32-year-old Jarvis Jarrett shot and killed Cox inside Atlantic House Midtown sometime after 3 in the morning. <laughs> Cox's family tells me she was in a relationship with him. It appears that the uh, suspect was inside the apartment. Don't let no uh, forced entry or anything like that. Police say Jerry then began firing a rifle at first responders from a balcony on the 21st floor. At one point, investigators say he jumped from balcony to balcony, shooting inside and outside of the building, hitting several units. As we were getting this information through 911, our dispatchers could still hear gunfire being uh, played out throughout the building. At least one officer returned fire. They found Jared dead on a balcony. The Paul Hastings law firm tells us Cox had been an associate with them since 2016. In a statement, they said in part, we are deeply saddened by this tragedy and we are focused on supporting Courtney's family and one another through this difficult time. They described her as a dear friend and a colleague to their personnel in Atlanta and throughout the firm. In Midtown, born in Hill, Fox 5 News. Child. Okay. Um, I want to click out of this so it doesn't keep playing. There we go. Okay. So y'all still want to be social justice warriors, guys? You still want to argue with conservatives who say we need to be tougher on crime about not all, not all, not all these men. <laughs> I'll say this over and over again. No one's saying that unicorns don't exist. But what we are arguing is statistically the bulk of these men display and illustrate this type of problematic behavior, this predatory behavior. And here's my thing. They're taking out our best and brightest. This was a damn attorney. They were in a midtown Atlanta high rise apartment. This wasn't even the hood. And she got taken out like this. You know, like y'all think that, you know, if you do the right thing, go to school, remove yourself from these communities that you're saving yourself and protecting yourself from these men. But no, that's not enough because too many of y'all will take these dusties out the hood with you. And shit like this happens. Every six hours, y'all, every six hours. And I'm not, I'm not trying to victim blame. What I'm saying is that this really illustrates the importance of totally divesting completely. Don't just do the work. Don't just do all the hard work, blood, sweat, and tears to get yourself out of these shitty circumstances. Make sure that you remove yourself from anyone related to this type of problematic behavior. Don't do all that work to be successful and prosperous, to live in the suburbs and to live in an affluent area, just to date a damn dusty and then end up being victimized. Don't do that. Y'all. Okay. Um, so let's get into this next story about an unprotected woman whose dusty baby daddy shot her while holding her damn baby. And remember, we discussed a similar story over the summertime where this happened at a cemetery. This is a separate, distinct instance where this has happened again. OK, so I just wanted to be clear so you don't get confused because we know there's so much death and destruction that happens at the hands of these fools. It's hard to keep track and it's easy to confuse these stories with one another. But this is a totally distinct, separate instance. This is an isolated instance. Okay, and shout out to Black Women Divest from BM who shared this uh, with me. So let's watch this new story and then we will chat. The man accused of killing his ex-girlfriend is due in court today. Records say Zacchaeus Gaston was arrested overnight. He had been out on seven felony bonds at the time of the murder. Police say he killed his ex, Layla Steele, and shot their one-year-old son two weeks ago. He is now charged for murder, evading arrest, and two counts of assault. And this afternoon... Y'all, the Nignog shot the damn baby too. He shot the damn baby. Again, we know that not only are Black women unprotected, Black children are unprotected as well. So let's exit out of this so this doesn't keep playing. Um, I want to get into this last story that was shared with me from Jan. Shout out to Jan who shared this. 
um, about an Olympic track runner who was found stabbed to death in her home by her husband. And this is for those who claim that this is only an American problem. No, 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 no. The diaspora dusties don't protect their women either. They victimize and prey on their women as well. So let's watch this and then we will talk through. Mr. Rupp has died at the age of 25. The Olympic distance runner who competed in the Tokyo Games was found stabbed to death in her home in Kenya. Her husband, who is missing, is being treated as a suspect per BBC Sports. Local outlets reported that she was found with stab wounds in her abdomen and neck, per the Associated Press. When police got in the house, they found Tarop on the bed and there was a pool of blood on the floor. They saw she had been stabbed in the neck, which led us to believe it was a knife wound. And we believe that is what caused her death, the area's head of police, Tom McCoria, said, according to BBC Sports. He continued saying, quote, her husband is still at large. And preliminary investigations tell us her husband is a suspect because he cannot be found. Police are trying to find her husband so he can explain what happened to Tarop. Athletics Kenya issued a statement about Tarop's death on social media that reads in part, Athletics Kenya are distraught to learn about the untimely death of world 10,000 meter bronze medalist Agnes Tarop. Kenya has lost a jewel who is one of the fastest rising athletics giants on the international stage, thanks to her eye-catching performances on the track. During the recent Tokyo Olympics, Tarot placed fourth in the 5,000 meter race. Our best and our brightest, y'all. Our best and our brightest are dropping like flies. And again, this is why it's not enough to simply divest from the community. Because we think if we educate ourselves, if we work hard, if we diligently make progress and work hard and become successful, we, we can remove ourselves from these impoverished, crime-ridden areas, and that's all we have to do. You know, we, we, we become successful and we'll be good. That's not going to work if all you're going to do is take Blackistan Dusties with you. Because again, this woman was a damn Olympian. And y'all will wind up doing all this work. The other woman was an attorney. We've seen another story where a woman was a senior VP at a Fortune 500 financial company. I think it, it might have been JP Morgan Chase. She was the head of uh, diversity and inclusion and got taken out by a dusty. Because y'all end up becoming uber successful but still end up marrying and dating these damn dusties and they end up taking your ass out anyway. This is what I mean, divest completely from the community. We got to stop bringing these dusties with us when we progress. Leave them alone, y'all. Hell, once a dusty reaches a certain level of success, he's gone. When he get on, he leave your ass for a white girl. Why do y'all feel obligated to date one of these nicknogs? Why? Why? You're out of their league anyway. Why are you doing it? Again, we're unprotected. So we can't afford to take risks like this. They taking us out like flies, y'all. The list goes on and on. It goes on and on. Ask any content creator in this space, y'all. Ask Black Femicide, Divested Zealot, who cover similar stories. These stories come in so quickly, it's impossible to cover all of them. So I just, uh, quite frankly, had to had to cut off, um, you know, this video so it wasn't so long. All of these stories occurred over the past 30 days, and I still wasn't able to cover them all. So if you share stories with me to cover and you suggested some things and I haven't responded, don't think I'm ignoring you. It's just not enough time in the day to address all of them. It's so much. I'm telling y'all. Black women are unprotected. Black women are unprotected. And anytime you have defenseless, weak, vulnerable, and unprotected populations in a space full of predators, guess what's going to happen? They all going to be preyed upon. They're all going to be victimized. They dropping like flies, y'all. All 
All right. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. I know this was a difficult show, but I really, really appreciate you guys for listening and understanding how important it is to spread awareness of um, this content. Again, I appreciate you guys. Until next time, see you guys. Bye. Come across a red iPhone. Can you please bring it to the sound stage? Red iPhone, appreciate it.